the first winning season in six years here in South Carolina, uh, to me is, is awesome and it's good news and it's based on what we talked about earlier, you building that program. You're the third year and things have gotten increasingly better. Yeah, I'm real proud of our guys, Corey. Um, uh, we, we didn't handle some things real well during the year, mm -hmm. especially in the month of January. Uh, I thought we were, well, I didn't do my job as well as I needed to with Matt, not X and O stuff, managing personalities behind the scenes. And, and then our players were so young, we didn't handle the, 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 whatever success we had early, mm -hmm. uh, and we got distracted and, and didn't stay the course. Uh, but yet, when, when now that I've separated from the year, that's all part of it. It's all part. Our guys didn't understand what it takes to sustain when you're winning. And uh, we had to learn the hard way. It's the, uh, there's no shortcuts in learning all this stuff. And uh, um, when you take in consideration, we beat five top 50 teams. We beat six teams that played in the NCAA tournament. Uh, our, co our schedule uh, was ranked in the top 30 in the country. Our conference schedule was the hardest of any team in the SEC. Uh, and yet we were able to achieve some of the things that we speak about. It's another great step in the right direction. Well, you talk about the youth, and, and, and again, nobody's using that as an excuse. I know you never do that, but it's reality. And you had those early big wins. For a young team, uh, is it hard for them to, to handle that success, though? They start winning, fans get behind them. Oh, yeah, this thing is turning around, and maybe they start listening and reading too many of the press clippings. Think about this, Corey. We, if you look back, when we went on that run in December, mm -hmm. school was out, students weren't on campus, our guys only had basketball. There was no rules with how much time you can spend with players. So we were in here, not that we ran them into the ground because we're not into that, right. but one-on-one -on -one workouts, watching film with them, uh, team practice, guys coming in the gym and getting extra shots with a coach and you're just in their mind so you, you understood, what, they understood what you wanted. We go out and win those games. Now all of a sudden, we, it's January 5th, 6th, 7th, whatever it is that we're playing Florida, all the students get back on campus. Uh, you got all the national guys talking about South Carolina's a top 25 team. Right. If the tournament was right now, South Carolina's in the tournament. Right. Now I'm sitting there telling my guys, you guys don't change what you've done. Right. Don't pay attention to this stuff. Right. We didn't have anyone in the locker room that's ever been through that. So there was not a voice in there amongst the peers that can kind of keep everyone in the right place. So we had to go through it. Uh, going forward now, you lose Ty Johnson, uh, the only singer in this basketball team. You're going to pick up uh, P.J. Dozier, Chris Silva, a big body guy, physical guy, to add w what you have. I mean, you, going forward, your outlook for the team next year in that fourth year, is that kind of the year you feel like now's the time we, we make that move? This is the time we really press. we got to get to some postseason play. Yeah, it, I, this is the way I view things. Every recruiting class, your, your object is, when you're building, is the next recruiting class needs to be more talented than your previous recruiting class. That's what you, you try to do. Uh, always recruit a better player, a better player as you move forward. Uh, we got two guys, and Chris Silva and obviously PJ, who by the way, how proud does he make all of us here in Columbia? Yes. McDonald All-American, right. uh, all the accolades he's gotten, uh, such an unselfish kid, so deserving of everything that goes his way. Absolutely. But when you add those two guys to your program, if the onus was on them to figure things out, that's real hard. But now you have a Cinderella Stornwell. You've got, <coughs> excuse me, Dwayne Notice, Michael Carrera, Limonis, all those guys that have been through the fire. They understand what it takes to succeed at the collegiate level. Uh, you know, our friend, the captain, he always uses that resume, leave your, uh, uses that line, leave your resume at the door. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, those guys now uh, in the locker room, they've gotten better. They understand the ups and downs, the emotional swings, how hard winning a game is. So now when those two talented kids walk in this locker room in June, they've got a core guys in place that they're going to learn how to work from.